out to do two heat exchanger change outs at the same location. Uh, the heat exchangers are cracking through, burners wore out, draft motors wore out, the whole unit uh, I recommended it to be replaced, but it was decided to not do that and to repair the unit. So we're gonna put uh, basically all new heating components in it. So I thought I'd take you along for the ride. All right, new guys, definitely something you're gonna want is a good quality rope. Because when you've got a straight ladder like that, it's a little hard to carry things like this up the ladder. Plus, if you get caught by the OSHA people, your company's gonna get a willful violation, which is gonna cost them a lot of money for doing stupid stuff. And you're gonna make sure that it's thick enough that it's not gonna cut into your hands. And you guys have seen this thing before. Basically, she's gonna go down there and you can just hook it and pull it up. And there's one. And there's the other. This one's got a bad heat exchanger, and so does this one right here. You know, I used to be a Bosch guy. How many of you guys have been having problems with these switches going out on these? This isn't even a year old. I think it's about four months old. See how it jumps? The smoothness, though, is completely gone. Luckily, today it's only 32 degrees. The day I was supposed to do this originally was going to be, I think, six. Might get these burners out of the way first thing, makes it a lot easier. Hook that, that. Through. All right, on these burners, something you want to see, like I've pointed out before, you've got a divot or a rivet, whatever you want to call it, there. So the crossover's there, to this crossover, no rivet, no rivet, and over here, this one's got a divot there, so it's gonna be on the outside. Those are getting replaced, igniters and stuff are getting replaced. Some of this stuff is borderline, but beings they're going to sink this kind of money into it. I want to make this thing last as long as possible. As you can see, the draft motor is kind of poor condition. It works, but the fan blades are starting to get all ate out. It's just not worth having to come back a year later and saying, hey, you need this expensive part. Then they feel like you didn't do your job right the first time. So we just uh, recommended it all as optional things, and they chose what they wanted to go with, and we go from there. Okay, there's the heat exchanger. Proximity sensor for the draft motor. The power wires for the draft motor itself. Just cut them loose and then we'll come back into them here in a little minute. There we go. There's one, it's pretty bad. So yeah, that's that's the reason why. You gotta watch for these seams where they seam it. They do make a stainless steel heat exchanger or it's got some stainless steel in it, something in there. Basically, it's more expensive and it lasts longer. Um, these are just the standard ones. Uh, you can check this pretty easily from the side here with the mirror or you can come in through your plate right here. Those are some of the things to look for. Did, they didn't used to give us this restrictor plate that goes in here. Um, I need to check the new one. I believe they do now. Yeah, this part right here, they didn't used to give you that. They used to have to strip this thing out of the old ones, which kind of sucked, but now they give it to you. 
This plate here tends to rot out pretty quickly also. It's obvious the heat exchanger's been changed before because those are traditional 5 sixteenths. We'll brush some of this garbage out so it's all clean and nice. See this part here they don't give you. So you've got to You gotta add that yourself. Draft motors are exactly the same, nothing new on those. That metal tends to rot out. See that restrictor plate thing was included with the other one, I believe. Sometimes they include it, sometimes you don't, so you're best off just ordered on both of them. Both draft motors, like I said, are exactly the same. I checked part numbers ahead of time. I think this other one only has two burners. If you notice, the new ones here are made out of metal instead of plastic. So it's gonna be a little more durable. And then we'll just keep our box for our trash, which comes in handy. That way the stuff doesn't get blown off the roof, which, you know, luckily today is a beautiful day. The old ragged flag, it's hardly blowing. You can see the uh, windmills from here. Great day to be alive. One thing I noticed too, the Hitachi Phillips has held up to stainless steel better than the Milwaukee does, which is kind of interesting. Anybody else have a preference on the gloves? I like the jersey. They seem to hold up halfway decent for me. I uh, find them to be warm enough when it's crappy cold out, but believe it or not, as sloppy as they are, they actually, I'm able to grip a hold of screws and stuff. I mean, yeah, they get a little pinched here and there, which causes a hole, but anybody else have a preference on their gloves? Feel free to comment down below. There we go, it's a little better. And there you be, all nice and lined up, criss criss cross. Makes you want to jump. Here's some insulation packs they come with. This piece here, a lot of times I will put in there to seal it between the draft motor. Now there will be some screws on this thing that you may want to steal from it because they don't give you no extra screws. So if they're in decent shape, take them out and use them. piece here goes there like that. The white felt on the back side seals that there to there. But there's nothing right there so I like to use that little white piece. We can use this wide one or we can use this little one here. Probably doesn't make much of a difference. Personally I find it to be a little easier to use the wider one. This part can get a little trickier because some of these are used for your burners to hold them in place. Like you got one screw that's going to go right there. And I believe the other one might be right there. So we got that punched out. You can line this up in advance a little bit, makes it a little easier. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll mark my things because a lot of times you can't see the screw marks once you got the uh, insulation in place. If I was trying to do this vertically, I'd go ahead and probably put the spray adhesive on there, but since we're not, see how those markings all just disappeared and you can't see nothing anymore? That's the reason why. When the burners go in there, they'll line up just like that right there. They're just like brand new again. And then around the outside edges of the heat exchanger, a lot of times I'll glue some of this. I'll cut it in strips and I'll put it around the outside edge corners of the back side of this. Or you can put silicone, red silicone on there works good too. See that? Just wonderful. 
Everything's tight and tidy. My spray glue is not working right, so I'm just gonna put silicone behind there. All we need to do is keep it from the pressurization of the blower there coming back into the burner area, causing a disturbance on the flames. So may get away with nothing, but I'm just gonna put a light bead or silicone around it. Boom, there you go. Sometimes a scratch all or something like that comes in handy to line stuff up. Probably get a couple of these screws on the outside figured out first and it'll all come together. Leave them a little loose at first until we get our spot. Your longest screws you want to save for your burner otherwise uh, you can't get all the way through the burner bracket and all that all the way back into the other piece battery went dead gotta love gopro so we've got everything mounted up here we've got our burners back in we used our longer screw over here and over there we used the wire tie doubled up to another wire tie so that it kind of keeps that away from the metal as best as possible and then we've got our uh, flame sensor in place. We've crimped down our connectors there. We've had to add uh, 5 16 instead of the Phillips screws. So that's where we're at right now. Now hooking up the proximity sensor, Hall effect sensor from the draft motor. These older ones don't use pressure switches. Actually, it was more reliable. Now I see they're going to pressure switches that tend to malfunction on a routine basis. So we've got our cross member there all hooked back up. Everything's sealed down in here. Everything's just about ready to burn off the uh, oils on the uh, heat exchanger, which like I said, I've got this blocked off. So once this is uh, up and running, we're gonna run it, let all the smoke come out. Then we'll open it up and we'll let the uh, hot air roll. But until then, I don't wanna set off any smoke alarms or cause any uh, concerns down below. People always overreact when they smell stuff. So they, you wanna get rid of that before it goes down into the uh, working area. One thing we forgot to quote, but I'm gonna replace it anyway, is the new four microfarad capacitor. It's right there. It's coming in at 3.6. You always replace the capacitor whenever you replace a motor. Okay, she's kicking on by herself. Turn on the gas. She goes. See all that crap of getting blown down in there. all kinds of issues. You could also take the belt off or pull the wire to the contactor on the uh, motor and let her run a little hotter. But I'm not seeing any disturbances in my flames. Everything looks pretty good. about it on that one here's the other one it's even worse than the other one was all eight out all the way down along here and this is 460 volt system made in Mexico so there's a heat exchanger mm -hmm. 